The Hightail team are revealing more and more information as we reach the end of 2023. Recently, they've been answering some big questions and have confirmed lots of different features that we'll be seeing more of in the next blog post, which is due any time now. But before we talk gameplay, early testing, and age ratings, the team explained why Hytale will not be pay to win. It began with a Twitter user who asked the game director John Hendricks how high is the priority of companions in Hytale. John replied saying whatever scale we're judging this by, pets or companions are highly prioritized, an 11 out of 10. This prompted a user to theorize that there will either be an in-game pet and minion system where you can tame and train different mobs, or the companions are going to be a paid cosmetic. With John being very quick to respond, we are not fans of pay to win. If they went with a paid cosmetic approach, they know that they wouldn't be able to add functionality or any special abilities. That would be horrible. Just imagine waiting for this game for 5 years only to be told that paying players would have access to things that make them stronger or give them a competitive advantage. That would suck. I'm glad the team is starting to reveal more about their monetization principles. But what about their rules for online play? As voice chat has become more and more prevalent in gaming, including Roblox now offering the feature on their platform, people are wondering whether Hytale servers will offer this, perhaps some kind of proximity chat, or will they leave all of that to modders and Discord servers? Now, Noxy did mention the potential for a voice chat feature way back in 2020, when he suggested a tabletop RPG toolkit for Hytale, and people People were definitely into it, but John recently cautioned that when it goes well it is great, but it often leads to toxicity. There is no John confirmed voice chat to be found here by the way. So many of the positive situations can be handled through platform level and third party solutions. It's a tough one. So perhaps now the scope of Hytale has widened, things like voice chat are being considered a lot more carefully. Next, John confirmed that the first public playtest of Hytale took place on a prototype build. A test for the new engine that used all the combat mechanics they've been working on for years. The tests were not done on an old build or legacy engine, as some people were suspecting. And that's good, because it means that the test did in fact happen recently, and wasn't just some years old event they pulled out for blog post content. Quote, we used our prototype engine. It's almost like we have two race cars, and we're in the process of fitting the parts we love from the old one onto the other. Thankfully, we can still get in practice laps on the older one. We know that 2022 and 23 have really, really been the big transition years for development, as they refine their new engine that works for mobile, console, and PC, whilst moving over all the mechanics they've been developing since 2016. Now that we're reaching the end of that period, we'll finally be able to see much more gameplay. Adult content and ratings were also discussed recently, with John outright saying that they as a team will not be putting adult content into Hytale themselves, and that parental controls will be there to help protect younger players. That said, there are no age ratings for the game yet, or even official community guidelines to help define what they consider adult content, so they really can't be much more specific about it right now. The game hasn't actually been through the ESRB or PEGI rating processes yet, which are how games get those little age icons, so until then we won't be able to fully confirm. As far as accessibility for the game goes, the team is constantly looking into ensuring that Hytale is available in as many countries as possible, with John even actively looking into places like Myanmar which lacks some international payment systems. John Hendricks certainly does know a lot, and as previous employee of Microsoft and a creative director for Minecraft, it's no doubt that he has even more insights to share. He's met with the leadership of Riot Games many times, which means that eyeballs are still on the project and they are still planning to deliver the game. Like John, I also went on vacation recently, visiting a YouTuber conference, and not gonna lie, when I brought Hytale up, most people genuinely asked, oh wait, they're still going to release that game? And at this point, I'm not surprised. Hypixel Studios have now achieved what they initially set out to do when they announced the delay way back in 2021. They've reset the hype, so to speak. There is no longer a disdain or hate for how long the game is taking. Most people are just indifferent. A place where most people were before the trailer. Perhaps the team are doing this all in an effort to totally re-encapsulate that hype through an all new, fully upgraded lens when they finally reveal more. 
Why else would John be talking so much about all these features before his vacation? Let's reel some of these game features off. First, he confirmed this long thought to be elven race to actually be a player made character and avatar. He also stated that the mobbed factions we know in the game, like Quebec, Trox, and Ferens, actually adapt in different ways based on the environment and climate. For example, Quebecs may be affected by a drought, or a Ferren may wear winter padding in snowy areas. In terms of magic, John confirmed that you can become a kind of monk with healing abilities and that there are many types of magic across Hytale. In fact, elemental powers are still a very interesting part of the world. You can even change the colour of magic and customise the look perhaps even come up with your own, it's safe to say their vision for imagination and creativity has not gone overlooked in the years of quietness. Orbis, the planet where the adventure slash story of the game takes place, is much richer and far more balanced. Oceans still surround the main continent of the story mode, but John held back on describing the main continent's actual geography, as he wants to expand more when it's no longer in spoiler territory, only stating that it is bigger and better. Orbis and Nexus were seemingly confirmed to be actual planets rather than dimensions as many have speculated for years now and an integral part of the story. But this still doesn't feel like a full definitive confirmation of what Altiverses actually are, although John did mention that the remaining planets in the image represent worlds with stories that players and creators will tell. We do know now though that there will be more main characters like that of Tessa and Kairos who were seemingly key characters that were revealed in concept art a long time ago, Orbis officers that were theorized to be related in some way. Whilst the user interface and look of Hytale has likely changed a lot since 2018, and we will get to see all of that soon hopefully, John did confirm that Friends and Social, two tabs we saw all the way back in the trailer, was still a big focus. He also swerved a question about Redstone and what Hytale's equivalent could be, quite tactically might I say, and in regards to difficulty of the actual game, something that many argue games like World of Warcraft and Minecraft have kind of lost over time, he said if you had a base without a roof, for example, it would be viable but challenging to survive. I, I mean, I think that sounds good. What do you think? Let me know how difficult you want your first Hytale Knight to be. Obviously, there's been a lot of Hytale news recently. It's been coming up on social media. There have been other people making videos about the topic. And I know that questions, confusion, and excitement are all in high regard right now. What is going on with Hytale? Well, I'm going to be addressing that in the next few videos. We've got a little bit more news to catch up on, and then it's go time. We're looking at what they're going to reveal at the end of the year, along with where we actually are in terms of the wait for Hytale. When is it coming? Is it really going to be worth it? It's time to reevaluate evaluate exactly what we're waiting for and the timelines we're waiting on. A big thing to note now is that we're coming up on the five year anniversary of the trailer and let's be honest, a decent portion of those 60 million viewers that watched the trailer back in 2018 are bound to not be as interested in the game anymore. In fact, the game is going to be releasing to a really different audience. Remember the themes and age rating of the game really haven't evolved since the trailer, but we all have. We've all grown five years. I know that I used to be a 19 year old kid waiting for the game. And now I work with other channels and run businesses. Members of the community have got entire channels or even careers in the gaming industry. The landscape has changed, but of course I remain vigilant and I'm happy to be part of this little corner of people that are still waiting and still excited. Also, I can officially confirm that our annual charity event, Hytale Thankmas 2023, is officially going ahead. We've raised over $27,000 so far and we're aiming to raise another $10,000 this year. I'll be announcing more information on Twitter and my community tab so make sure to check there at the start of December. Continue smiling, consider subscribing, and thanks for watching Quebec Corners.